2005 Subaru Outback right rear wheel bearing making noise we're gonna replace the bearing I'm Brian Essen from How To Automotive and we'll walk you through that process. To get started we're gonna put our car up on the hoist so if you're doing this at home use floor jacks and jack stands and remove the, uh, the wheels. Okay to get started we need to remove the 14 millimeter uh, caliper bolt just the bottom one take the caliper up flip it up out of the way and uh, hang the caliper over and then uh, we need to remove the the bolts on the uh it's actually on the back side of the spindle so we need to remove these 14 millimeters here and one just behind the uh the bracket right here is another one inside here you need to remove the 14 millimeter there and then the caliper cage bracket assembly will come off the best way to get to those bolts is within the within the if you can see my ratchet here and it's got an extension going through the arm into the back of the caliper cage Okay, now that we got the caliper uh, completely off and the cage off, we want to take a 8 millimeter by 125 bolt and screw it into the little thread holes on the side of the rotor. Like that, because the rotor won't be able to come off, it's going to be stuck. So then you take, put, a, put that bolt in and you take a, uh, you can use a ratchet, air ratchet, uh, electric gun like I'm using here. And you screw it in. And then you'll probably do the same thing on the, the, there's two bolt holes. If you have two bolts, is way. And then uh, that, what that does is it breaks the, um, the seal around here. It kind of rusts on the hub. And once you do that, now you can work the rotor off itself. You want to uh, want to do it in little steps back and forth. You don't want to cock it too far. You know, it gets kind of gets stuck on there. Okay, now that we got our rotor off, we want to take the axle nut off. We're removing the 32 millimeter nut we're going to take the uh the park brake shoes off so we're going to need a tool that looks like this kind of like a, a brake tool and it hooks on there and you twist it and it pops the spring off and you're going to take that spring off and you're going to take the inner spring off so after taking the two springs off now you're going to take the uh the side clips you, all you need is a flat blade screwdriver and you're going to put it in to the slot and turn it quarter turn to the left or right and you're going to take the spring off, set it aside, and you're going to do the same thing on this one. Now that you got these springs off, you're just going to take it and kind of rotate it out of your way and take them off. I'm just, I like to leave them hanging like this since we're, I'm just leaving them together like that. And now you can take this and just kind of set it aside. And take this off too, just to set it aside. Now what we're going to do from the back side is we're going to remove these bolts. There's four bolts and the whole bearing and hub assembly will come off. So they're going to be on the back. And you'll probably have to use extensions, probably three inch extensions or so. They come from the back to get to them. From the back. four bolts removed the whole bearing assembly will come out so I like to kind of look at how it went in actually I don't think it's gonna matter so we're gonna set that aside we're gonna put the new uh, the new bearing in so before we put our new bearing in we're gonna take a little blue thread lock uh, thread sealer or maybe a uh, Loctite is another brand of it this is Permanex it's, and you're gonna put a little bit on the threads of the, of the, um, of the new bearing reason why is the bolts they do not have block washers or anything so you don't want this to vibrate loose and come out and the wheel comes loose so th put a little thread locker on there and now what we're going to do is we're going to take the bearing and we're just going to line up our backing plate because it's going to want to fall off or whatever just kind of line it up and stab our uh, our axle through it and kind of line everything in and shake it through and then from the back side we'll put our bolts through and we'll start one at a time and kind of so you kind of wiggle it a little bit and position to all four bolts to, uh, or start it by hand. And then once all four bolts are started by hand, you'll, you'll run it in tight and tighten up 
You can also start your axle nut and kind of help hold everything into place so it doesn't fall off. Okay, if you if you go to line this up and it doesn't quite line up, you want to flip it 180 and put it back on. So then you want to torque these bolts down to um, uh, 48 foot pounds, and then after that's all torqued down, you want to put your axle nut on and torque it down, and you want to torque it down to 140 foot pounds is the spec on this axle. And then after you get that torqued down, right where this little groove is on the end of the axle, if I can, you want to ping this in a little bit. And put a little indention in it and that that prevents the nut from backing back off and coming loose and it's very important that you get this torque down because the actual squeezing of the bearing is what holds the bearing together and prevents it from wearing out so after you get that done now we're going to proceed to put our emergency brake shoes back on the easiest way to do that is to, to take this one side that uh that we took apart put it back on the grooves and then put the the spring that looks like like this we'll put that in and turn it a half turn so it's going to go into this little slot right here so it's going to go through the pad into the slot and turn a half turn and that locks it in place so we'll do that one first so after getting that shoe on you want to take the lower spring hook it in the corner of the place you want to take your little triangle uh, looking piece put that back on where it goes right there and then you want to take the little separator here and slide that in into the spot where it goes in between the uh, the two uh, shoes and the uh, inner uh, park brake uh, just lever. So you'll put that all that like that. Now you want to hook your other shoe on on here. And what you're going to do is you're going to take your adjuster and you're going to slip it in there, and you have to you have to pry with your hand pry the, and stretch it until this both of these line up in the slots so the bottom one will look like that and then you, what you do is you just rotate the shoe around back into position and you want to slip this little uh, spring right here it goes over this right here so the spring will have to be compressed a little bit and you'll line all that up and then once you get that lined up You'll put on this spring here and lock and that'll hold it down and then you can put on your two uh, two outer springs so now you can see i got this spring in and how it's in its little slot right there now what we're going to do is take the they're both the same spring so it doesn't matter which one goes left or right so you're just going to take the straight in put it in like this then you're going to take your brake tool like this and hook it in on the spring it on the spring like that and hook the other end around the uh, around the nose of that and, just, and then what I like to do is see it, it also kind of spreads the spring out a little bit so what I'll do is I'll get a pair of pliers and squeeze the uh, the ear I'll show you on this one see how it's, it's kind of flared open a little bit so once it's on there I'll squeeze this and bend it back around a little bit so I just use a pair of needle nose pliers like this and kind of and kind of bent it around I made it more of a horseshoe shape now. Now that we got that down, we're gonna put the other spring on and do the exact same thing we did on for this spring. We'll just put it here and put it on. Okay, so now we're ready to put the the rotor back on. So what we wanna do is slide it on over the hub and we wanna check, try to lightly spin it and check and see how, if there's a, the park brakes are adjusted right. So there, you should feel a light little drag and if you, can, if you don't feel a drag on, on the rotors, then what you do is pop it back and off. adjust the adjuster spoon one or two clicks slide the rotor back on see how it feels if it's still too loose pop it back off adjust the screw pop it back on until you until you feel a light like basically what you want is this edge of the uh, the, the uh, shoe to be riding on the inside just barely touching so once you get that adjustment on the uh, uh, park brake adjustment is good and you're ready to put the calipers back on so the bolts that hold the caliper cage back on or bracket, whatever you want to call it. Um, you want to put a little blue thread lock tight on that too. And go ahead and put that back on and start the bolts and torque them down. Okay, after getting your caliper cage bolt, bolted up and torqued down, now you just want to put your, your pin back into the top slot. Slide it in, rotate your pet, rotate your caliper down, and uh, push your pin in. And uh, 
You're gonna put a little blue Loctite. You're gonna put a little blue Loctite on, on this bolt too, and then put it in, and tighten your caliper. Now you're just gonna put your wheel back on, torque the wheel, lug nuts, and uh, just as a precaution, pump your brake pedal in case anything got moved in the calipers. And uh, take it for a test drive and make sure everything's okay. And that pretty much completes the brake, I mean the uh, rear wheel bearing on a Subaru Outback 2005 model. I'm Brian Essek from How To Automotive and uh, as usual it's my pleasure sharing my experience with you guys. And I'd like to remind you to subscribe and give it a thumbs up if you like it and um, thank you very much.